Assassin's Creed Japan. Is this the get out of jail free card for Ubisoft or a seppuku for the entire series? Falling on its own sword is a cycle of narration that started two generations ago finally ends. As Valhalla nears, this question is starting to rear its head. In 2020, we had Ghost of Tsushima and Valhalla here at the end. And after that, it's really anyone's guess, but the question and the rumor has really always been, is the Assassin's Creed franchise going to visit Japan? And let's just get this out of the way. When I'm discussing this, I'm going to be comparing some Ghost of Tsushima elements as well as prior Assassin's Creed titles to a supposed Assassin's Creed Japan game. If you're of the belief that a Ghost of Tsushima title has absolutely neutered any chance of an Assassin's Creed Japan title, I will submit to you that getting it both ways is a Pornhub category and not a discussion ender. Otherwise, I'd still be playing the Atari 2600 and I wouldn't play any other top-down games because Asteroids was the first fucking one that did it right. Instead, this is actually a discussion and when I talk about getting out of jail free card is I mean getting out of jail of the perceived already recycling of different systems that a lot of people complain about when it comes to, in particular, Origins, Odyssey, and Valhalla. What do they need to do? Can they change everything and maybe come back in a couple years? Or do they do a Japanese-based and styled title? And would that be their get-out-of-jail-free card? I may also do a video on a possible futuristic one. Ghost of Tsushima is the ultimate 500-pound gorilla right now. Whether you loved it or hated it, that game by Sucker Punch is now firmly standing in that time frame as one of the best titles to explore the period. And while Assassin's Creed games utilize the Animus and reading people's DNA is like some kind of genetic peeker poking their nose through someone's late-night window, just because one title did something doesn't mean another can't. As always, if you like these videos, subscribe. I would love for you to do it. Watch the other ones. I also did a video on Assassin's Creed Valhalla recently, as well as Legion, and you'll see some stuff for Cyberpunk. It's going to be a very busy year. Let's first kill two birds, one stone. I know in some way, officially, Alex Hutchinson did talk about this a little bit. He was directing the AC games at the time, and he stated that a couple places that fans continually offered as locations to go were Egypt and Japan and a couple others, and they'd be boring places for the AC games to visit. Now, later it was discussed that overall, it wasn't necessarily just boring locations. It was that they didn't really have historical characters to go after when it comes to Japan, nor would gameplay diverge that much from the current titles. First, let's just look at that in the light of other games that have come out. It doesn't really seem to matter that much anymore. Most of the characters in the Assassin's Creed titles aren't really based on being historically accurate or even real anyway. Odyssey then jumps to friggin' Atlantis. That's aside the point. Those comments are lodged in the past. I think it's best to frankly leave them there. Playing against expectations versus blithely just finding timeframes where it'd be easy to do something and make a creation of yourself, I think restrictions many game developers enjoy are those that put constraints on exactly what they can do within a time frame. Not just find the surprisingly enjoyable and the unknown like they did with Origins after that comment, but to find the most enjoyable thing in an assumed location and in an assumed time frame and have to figure out a way to make the gameplay not only fit, but be divergent and enjoyable. For example, I feel that in regards to Assassin's Creed titles based in Japan, we can see not only the return to the typical stealth style gameplay that is maybe dropped to the wayside, but also the social stealth systems that the Assassin's Creed games have always tangentially touched on. There's a little bit of flirtation there, but it's always just over the shirt. I would like to see them dive in. I mean, Ubisoft, not everything has to be a damned battle. What about missions where you simply take on shinobi-like activities using social stealth to do nothing more than sneak in and eavesdrop on enemies, then return to report it? Sure, you could probably break in and kill everybody because Ubisoft seems almost incredibly scared of having every game not have some kind of over-the-top battle kind of solution to it. But returning stealth to a game based originally in stealth would be a great first step, especially if when they looked at it, it wasn't just, oh, stealth failed, I'm going loud, but other various ways in which you could get out of it using different things that the shinobi are actually known for. Switching different disguises, poisons, maybe different things to knock people out, but at the same time, you just simply should not ever go loud. Now, I get it. A lot of people say, well, that's a closed-in world style of mission, and we don't like that. A lot of people complained about that when we looked at Red Dead 2. I get that. I'm not saying that you absolutely have to have this closed-off dynamic, but how many times is it where you're doing something stealthily, and the moment you go loud, everybody in the entire location knows that you're there? And a lot of times, you just end up ratcheting back onto that style of gameplay. I think Assassin's Creed Japan could have various systems in place where you don't end up defaulting directly to action. That's all I'm saying. And I would like to see Assassin's Creed, regardless if they go this route or otherwise, 
embrace this kind of mission dynamic. And I'll talk about Shinobi a little bit later and Ninja and stuff like that, but I would like to see Assassin's Creed look at this various stuff, especially when you look at Japan and you look at its world building across different games. Let's just take for a brief moment Ghost of Tsushima. Ghost, when you were playing, it facilitated this warmth, even in the darkest times. It reflected itself both by that incredible color scheme and the way in which the world around you assisted the main character at all times. Something that, aside from the owl or the hawk or the eagle or a fucking pterodactyl the main characters in each of the Assassin's Creed games have, has never been a focal point of those titles. At some point, I don't know why we just don't have a damned platypus so you can take care of all of the animals at once. Or maybe a marmoset, because I think they're cool. Die tribe aside, Jin feels connected to the world throughout. Foxes lead him to locations around the world and the wind leads you to objectives. Nothing requires this monstrosity of a HUD to get in your way. Something that I am not denying is a fair bit of a problem in the Assassin's Creed games, even if the map looks like this and goes to Shishima. This can seem difficult, but Ubisoft consistently throws new systems into the games anyway. Look at Origins and Odyssey, where Ubisoft has been playing around with the hud design already. Why not have the bird actually lead you? You have it anyway. The bird can be Assassin's Creed version of the fox. Why not have more visual indicators of something occurring in the game world? Or imagine that the character actually discusses what they see as they travel, either alone or with others. Hey, bro, you see that hill over there? That's pretty sweet. Let's climb up it and see who can piss off it farther. Why can't characters walking into forest areas have the occasional and not overused one-liner about forest being dangerous. I'm not saying Dragon's Dogma Pond's telling you every 40 seconds the wolves hate fire, but come on. The integration of vocal and musical and graphical cues can replace a good deal of troublesome HUDs and a game based in what is considered a culture that's closer to natural elements than most others would be a perfect fit. Just look at Falconeer coming out soon. It shows how music can inform you of where you are in the game world, with wind chimes playing out in particular locations. Locations. Imagine musical tracks themed after the location's topography itself. It's not unheard of, but it is something that I think isn't heard enough. And also, I know that some people probably think that much of this is just due to the main character not being a part of the animus and questionable memories that are consistently delivered to you or being saddled to a present or a future animus kind of discussion, something that has hurt the Assassin's Creed games in the past. But I do feel that this is a title and is a situation where we see them digressing a little bit from the animus in the first place. Not something that you have to completely ignore, but something that we can definitely see is Ubisoft's weakness a little bit when trying to tell this story. Now, all things considered, Assassin's Creed games, on the other hand, compared to others, have really been a sandbox masterclass in throwing a ton of stuff into the world and just seeing what comes out the other end. Sometimes what comes out that other end is a densely packed story, like maybe the original titles. Other times, they have failed. At this time, we will be ignoring, of course, the 2D titles in the Chronicle series, because while they did focus on China and Russia and India, respectively, they also seem to show Ubisoft's general discomfort with focusing an entire mainstream title on them. And none of those really had any of the elements I'm talking about. Now, I think when you look back at Assassin's Creed, you could say Assassin's Creed 3 when you play as Connor. That maybe had a connection there as a Native American, but really when you look at the way that was put together, it was more of a connection to and a front end for the crafting system. I'm not necessarily talking about that. I'm talking about looking at a system and dynamically connecting the new changes that you want in gameplay to the location and the heritages that are already there. It's even for its long tradition of strange myths and strife, but also because Perhaps in this world, maybe Ubisoft could do more in a cerebral way of taking over and commanding locations. As I said before, not everything needs to drop down to combat. But moving on from combat just for a moment, let's discuss the plot line and the timeline. First, discussing the timeline just for a moment, Ghost tackles the Mongol invasion time frame. I think that Assassin's Creed would probably not do so and would excel by not doing so. Japan in particular and its time frames have eternal strife and politics during the various and almost systematic struggles that Japan has continually faced due to its own classes and structure that are unique to it. And just speaking of the plot as a whole, all Assassin's Creed games have never been lacking in backstabbing, enemy torture racking, and castle sacking, but the samurai have an incredibly detailed history when it comes to political savagery and an almost fluid-like idea of loyalty that really fits in with the way the Assassin's Creed games have told their story. It is a time frame that's literally soaked in the blood of leaders dead by their best friend's blades. You can follow the rise and the fall of the samurai, the black sails time frame, or even before that, what about a story or a series of them where the beginning of the samurai as a class was just told via the animus and then you jumped in from there? I, for one, have never really felt that a Japanese Assassin's Creed game would hold extra excitement for me personally versus any other, despite my own love for the histories there. But ignoring that, 
if you look at it, it's a prime time for this kind of story and certainly prime time for the way Assassin's Creed loves to play with their politics. While having been recently explored with another game, it still leaves a lot of potential. And when you just look at the characters you could be here, Ubisoft's love for reflecting history, while not always being the most accurate, would actually help. The main character could be any number of different characters here, real or fictional within those time frames of the various warring and different warlords that are there, the daimyos and how they deal with one another. Characters that could explore the unique class systems, the military divides between the classes that other than those set aside for, like I said, Assassin's Creed 3, didn't really see much. You know, the American Revolution was covered, but it's not as explosive. Explored. Well, I would say Liberation did a very good job. A Japanese time frame could also fit nicely in the way that the story of the character is in Ubisoft games. As is normal in Assassin's Creed titles, you see the experiences of history, you bounce off the more well-known moments and events and people, but you don't exactly change the experiences themselves. That's what works so well with the Assassin's Creed titles, and I think would work really well here, depending on the various different time frames in which you jump back to ancient Japan. And the rich history here is just waiting to be embraced, in particular the tossing of the Imperial Regalia of Japan into the waters and their recovery. Imagine partaking in the search for the Kusanagi no Surugi sword and how that could move the plot forward. Even in a way, Ghost of Shishima sort of embraced the end of the samurai and how they began as a class. What I actually like is not only the beginning of the samurai, but various other instances of amazing history that have nothing to do with the Mongol invasions, but just the various different ways in which the Japanese had to deal with their own internal politics and strife, especially as landowners became massive army owners and what ended up occurring there. It's something that we've seen mimicked in many other locations, but hasn't been covered in games from Ubisoft. Even for a moment, looking at traversal and skills and weaponry, if there's one place that Ghost sort of left a spot for another success, it's within the actual world itself and the activities, not the typical hodgepodge of climbing to the top of some pagoda and circling it with your flying creature choice, but more so that aside from poetry, following foxes, and a few other things, Ghost left a lot of room for an Assassin's Creed game to slip in there with their somewhat atypical actions, but maybe turning it on its head a little bit. An Assassin's Creed game with the character, for example, being a warlord, would be able to follow that current path that we've seen of residences or places of living like Valhalla is bringing, but also allow for you to build out and take care of different people and possibly have them under your control. Maybe you end up gaining different levels of command by doing so, which is something that was very much embraced. And I know a lot of people don't like the boat style combat that we get in games, but you have a lot of that in this era as well. The boats of the time are really interesting and like the recent Assassin's Creed game, they fit into that gameplay mechanic. Even if you just look at the tactics used at the Battle of Danura, there's a richness there and a series of battles that I think would be something very interesting to explore. Of course, no video like this would be complete if we didn't talk about weapons in the time frame, and I think this would allow for the game to embrace a bit more of the fantastical with, let's say, the Ronin and the ninja mythologies and realities. Different teachers, perhaps, throughout the world, teaching different skills to your character, possibly letting the player choose between maybe three or five overall styles in which they actually play. Not just the weapons, which is what we see a lot of times. Perhaps a more riding-based samurai with buffs to fighting with others near you, or more prowess with the weapons to possibly changing statistics based on the various different armors that you could actually have. The Ronin with more freeform combat style that might trade some protection for flexibility, might even add a dirty trick or two, perhaps even giving bonuses for not being right next to an ally during a battle due to their wilder combat style and maybe their less regimented way of fighting. Again, this is just shooting from the hip. I think one place Ubisoft would not ignore would be the ninjas though, or the more accurate and less Chinese influenced term, the shinobi. They were mythologies and ideals. And while of course, these have been really bloated and obfuscated by years of movies and dudes selling dim mock books on the dark web, there is something here that could be explored. And again, feeds right back in to that social stealth dynamic. We could see more. And of course now the mechanical stealth dynamics, perhaps the ninja bonuses would revolve around bonuses to attacks from parkour positions. This is something that the Assassin's Creed games have really not taken taken care of. They haven't done a very good job of really allowing for the parkour moments of the game to reflect back into the actual gameplay and give you bonuses. Sure, you can do sky kills sometimes or quick assassinations, but what about running and leaping off something and attacking somebody and getting a bonus to your damage or various different things like taking a character and smashing their head against the ground, leaping up over a short wall and breaking their neck on it. Again, just shooting from the hip, but this is something we don't see a lot of times. Dirty tactics. This could round it out. The legendary blowgun and your ninja stars and your poisons, that kind of thing. We have seen some of that in Origins and Odyssey. But speaking again 
on the social disguise. Imagine having actual shinobi where wearing traditional garments to blend in versus that typical ninja black suit could be used. I could see all sorts of gameplay building out and it feeds 100% into the histories that actually existed in this time frame. Mix all that in and look at the stances, something other games have brought up, but we haven't really seen a lot of various different weapons that sort of reach out when it comes to Ghost of Tsushima. We did see that with Neo 2, and I love some of those side weapons. I would like to see us get a chance to sort of jump in there and do that. Now, we saw the Assassin's Creed game sort of go absolutely nuts left field all the way back with Syndicate and the one of my favorite missions, by the way, which is Spring Hill Jack. Of course, now as we move forward, we see things like Origins where you're fighting ancient gods and, of course, Odyssey which has you visit Atlantis. That also leads them the ability to do what they sort of want, which is what Ghost of Tsushima recently did with the Legends DLC, which is allow for you to not only have your more realistic, at least when it comes to Ubisoft's game design chops and their main storylines sort of already stretching the truth, but then if you wanted to, DLC that could go a little bit off the beaten path with the mythology itself. Listen, these always sort of go off the rails with me because they're a bit like a walk in the walk where I start looking at various different histories and I can't figure out sometimes why these companies make the choices they do. You may have noticed that I haven't really changed up the dynamic either that currently makes a Assassin's Creed game an Assassin's Creed game, their unique identity, if you will. That's on purpose. And while I think it won't be too many titles before Ubisoft has to change the title's gameplay a bit, almost like they did prior to Origins, I do feel that Origins, Odyssey, and Valhalla are trying to do at at least some things a little bit different. And I do think a Japanese based title would be well within this current cycle and possibly be a great place to sort of wrap up a bit of the storytelling when it comes to the Assassin's Creed cycle. In a weird way, I've felt for a while that Origins itself was a little bit like the Tokugawa family taking control in ancient Japan. It solidified changes into the Assassin's Creed branding. It codified the titles. Those that came after it were possibly secure in the identity of those changes, but they're a bit too closely being held. We certainly see that in ways where a lot of people look at Valhalla and go, is this just a skin? I personally don't believe so, and I've had time with it, but I get where you're coming from. Valhalla is coming soon. What happens after that? That's another video. As always, if you like these videos, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike it, give it a thumbs down. And I would like to know either or why you like them, why you dislike them, what you like. Tell me what you think. Do you want to see a Japanese-based Assassin's Creed, Chinese-based Assassin's Creed? Do you want them to go away? But you know what? You got to back yo shit up. If you have a reasons why you want to see these to go away, want to see this to never be another, let's say, Assassin's Creed title, I want to know exactly why. Back that shit up because people with facts are going to come forward and blow you out of the water if you're just like, mm, I don't like it because it's stupid. That's it for me. As always, peace out. Oh, wait. Hey, sheesh. Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, iTunes, Spotify, all those places. Please follow. I can only say please follow. That's the most I can do. But I got to tell you, it's an absolute help. If you like these kind of videos, you got to give it a thumbs up, man, so I know. And uh, come to Patreon if you want to support the channel. It's absolutely helpful, and it keeps us going in this weird time when a bunch of actors are making patrons, and they're, they don't even have a reason to make... I just saw somebody make a patron that had nothing. They're just like, I'm going to open a patron and do some shit. I'm like, damn, son. I had to sort of back my shit up. Now... None of that's happening. It's easy for a lot of us channels to get ignored. I would love for you to come by. If not, go out there, maybe subscribe to somebody that you like their stuff and haven't subscribed so far. It always feels good. Peace out. Enjoy the rest of your week.